Document, document. <laughs> Give us a chocolate, yeah. Hi, so my name's Jack Ross. I'm the founder of Vans Without Borders, and we're a humanitarian group who deliver essential aid to frontline areas in Ukraine. So we have Team Mechanic Henry. Morning. We have Edic. Morning. Igor. Morning. Welshman Darren. Morning. And Ukrainian Taras. Morning. <laughs> Big hit. So we picked the van up off Fenton, as you can see he's done a wonderful camouflage jobby on it. Uh, <laughs> Russians won't be spotting us at the front with that, thanks very much Fenton. While we were out delivering aid in the Donbass, we came across some of our army friends and they mentioned to us they just captured a Wagner prisoner, so I asked, can, can we interview him? They said, of course, he told us not to touch him because he has hepatitis and he went to prison for dealing drugs, which he denies. As we were interviewing him, I did feel bits of spit on go on me, which was not ideal in the slightest, but luckily I have had my hep jabs. Ну, как бы я, да, я как бы там, то, что я там заключенный, там, и ранее был судимый, я в Москве жил долгое время, там три раза в бутырке сидел, ну, это не подолго, то есть так получалось в 90-е годы. Но как бы у меня сознание не уголовника, а нормального как бы, человека. Мы там сидели в этих колониях, как вообще рабы, замотанные там, скандалы в эти там, ни влево, ни вправо нельзя, то есть там вообще полный бесед. Я представлю себя в военной компании. Наверное, слышишь, ЧВК Вагнер называется. Война тяжелая. Первый грех это дезертирство. Никто не дает заднюю. Никто не отступает. Поэтому я как бы выбрал э, Вагнер, то есть располагая к тому, что при первой малейшей возможности я перейду на ту сторону. Я верю, что вы можете вступить в свою вину, у кого есть желание вступить в свою вину кровью, вы можете вступить в подразделение Вагнер и заключить контракт на полгода. Далее через полгода уходите домой. Те, кто приезжает и в первый день говорит, куда-то я не туда попал, мы делаем отметку дезертир и после этого следует расстрел. Где-то 10 дней нас 7 февраля нас получили транспортный самолет буржуазный и отправили с Кемеровской области в Ростов. В Ростове нас переодели, выдали нам амуницию, то есть э, солдатское амундирование, там все. Мы еще дополнительно опять подписали контракт и нас направили на учебную базу. На этой учебной базе там еще не ходили, то есть а в общей сложности там около, наверное, было 500 человек, которые уже ранее прибыли, которые позже, ну, то есть которые ранее нас еще прибыли туда. Мы жили в Миндажах, то есть в земле в городе Миндажи. По соседству там расположены были палатки, в которых тоже проживают. Но... How does he feel that Russia is using the Wagner troops as cannon fodder? So Russia sees Wagner as expendable and sending them in for dangerous missions because they don't care. Просто посылают вперед на фарш и все, то есть они даже вообще там толком не делают ни разведку никакую, ничего, просто ну, сумасшедший дом. Они берут людей и в пеку кидают просто. Вот и все, вот все так Провели арт-обстрел, как непонятно, куда попали, не попали, не проверили. Солдаты располагаются, вот у нас все время, пока я находился, это антисанитария полнейшая, короче. То есть, ну, отношения как бы, ну, как, там нет такого, что там палка тебя бьют или еще что-то, но вот эта бытовуха, вот эта бытовая неустроенность. Я здесь вообще о нем не хочу думать. Ну, я вам так скажу, о человеке можно судить, допустим, то есть, если я сейчас начну говорить, что вот я там это, я такой это, то есть, как бы, можно сказать, да, он, он трясется, что за свою жизнь, там, за, за будущее свое, сейчас поэтому так стелит. Но э, я как человек творческий, перед тем, как сел, я не, у меня была литературная страница, я там публиковал свои рассказы, да, ну и были рассказы там, ну, которые касались нашей политической обстановки, как я видел, я это выражал. 
То есть у меня есть о Путине рассказы, да, там такие, такой политическая сатира такая своеобразная. Да. Если, например, допустим, вы посмотрите, да, вот эти вот вещи, вы сразу поймете, то есть сущность мою, понимаете? So while we were distributing aid in the Donbass, we stayed with some of our friends who are in an elite army unit at one of their outposts in the Donbass. Um, they're very kind, they look after us when we're there and tell us where we should go to help people and often give us a escort as well. So we're here now near the front to bring Alex and his unit a new pickup. So we've got them a Nissan Navara as their old car got destroyed. Um, luckily no fatalities, I just got shelled. But here we are, we've got a lovely new 4x4 track for them. What is it, Igor? It's a RPG, RPG 7. RPG 7, and it's got a Russian modification. This is from Soviet Union, this is very old, but very strong weapon. Sure and David yeah. take from Russia uh, anti-personnel. Granate. Hello? Ah, this is, you know, shots, you know. This is, you know, anti-personnel, right? Yeah. So this is parts of a Lancet drone that the units collect together. Well, this is, this is in a... But this is a suicide drone, I believe, which the Russians launched at the Ukrainian side and the Ukrainians shot it down. What was really concerning, actually, they showed us some of their stuff and they showed us a bag full of heroin needles. Um, they already turned the drugs over to the Ukrainian army to be destroyed. But it's so messed up to see that the Russians are employing people to distribute Class A hardcore narcotics such as heroin or crocodile to the Ukrainian people in the East in the effort of trying to get, um, trying to recruit more saboteurs by getting them hooked on drugs um, or trying to extort information out of people. It's really, really messed up psychological warfare. So they said they took this off a Russian agent operating in the Donetsk region. They said it was full of drugs and as you can see, it's full of, I don't want to touch too much of it, but it's full of needles. So it's full of needles, and so he was a heroin dealer working locally, and they captured him, gave the drugs to the police, um, assumed the guy's in prison. This is almost like something out of a movie. And then... So at one of the bases, man, they've got this dog guarding them. They found him in, I think it was back and he's just a nasty bastard. He's wagging his tail as if he's happy to see you, but he's taken a chunk out of a few of our guys already. So it's not the Russians we have to fear every night. It's the two elephants who we end up sharing with. Yeah. Essentials. Normal. <laughs> Normal. It's like they're in unison. Burns, bread, sweets. Good for you. Yeah. So we're taking Dima in to buy food. Dima, happy? Привет. So we're just putting it all through the checkout at the moment. He's very happy. He asked me, can I get another bottle of Coke? I was like, we'll get you 10, mate, don't worry. <laughs> so we've just dropped off a brand new bed and a sofa bed for Dima and his family. Yeah, your heavy lifting medal for this, anyway. <laughs> As you can see before, they were sleeping on the floor. This is their apartment, basically. So you walk in there, it's got a very small kitchen. And, um, sorry, that's Dima's mother. And then this was the other bed in here. And there were five people. Sleeping, as you see, that's the new stuff we dropped off at the back as well. Um, yes, it's well, it's heartbreaking to see, and you can understand why he was begging in the supermarket. You like it? Chai. Right, all bagged up and ready to go. Uh, we bagged it up because we're going to a hot area in the east uh, called uh, Rushkovka. Um, going to be distributing these bags there, dropping them quick and getting out quickly as well. So the road here is so bad, it's just rattling our car to pieces, so we decided to just drive the field instead. 
документ. Добрый документ. Документ. Я не понимаю английский. Give us a chocolate, yeah. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. No worries. Thank you. So we've just heard sniper fire over in that direction. Not ideal. So as we're coming into to the front, we start to see the areas on fire. Not, not great, that means there's an incoming, or does it just mean incoming rocket attacks? But this is why we're here to get these people food. Because there's little else they can do to to sustain themselves. So this area where we're distributing, as you can see, it's still got quite a buzzing town centre. The problem is no one's got money to buy anything. The only people in the shops are the military because they're the only one who had jobs in this area. That's one, yeah. As we've been dropping off the the aid, the sirens have gone off outside and bombing has begun of this area. So those of us who have followed us for a while, you can see it's a return to dust in Ukraine. So we're looking forward to scraping this out of our eyes, noses and every orifice for the next two weeks. <laughs> who needs smoke grenades when you have this? <laughs> so we've just finished dropping off in Konstantinovka. Uh, the area is extremely deprived. So we gave out loads of food and supplies and candles, which people were really grateful for because there's no power in this region. And you can't give a generator to everyone and not everyone can afford to run a generator. So the locals were really happy to see us and the aid went like that. Uh, it's great to be able to give them even more aid than usual. And you know, hopefully it's gonna make a real difference to their lives. Thank you very much, Google Maps. The van is now stuck. Very good currently being towed by a kind Ukrainian in his tractor. Really where I wanted to be this evening. <laughs> <laughs>